Hello friends, this is just a quick edit at the beginning of the video. I had posted this video once already and then I went and I looked at it and I realized I had left out a major section. So I panicked and I deleted it right away so that I could correct it and repost it. Um, there were two people who had made a comment um, and I saw that there were two comments but I hadn't read them because I, I just didn't want anybody else to click on the video and see something that wasn't correct. So um, I'm so sorry about that and if you um, are two of those people who commented on the last video that I deleted. Um, please add your comment again. I'd love to read them. So sorry about the uh, error and here's the, the um, repost and it's all there. Hello everyone, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks and I'm so excited to show you this. I know drop stitch scarves are something that um, I've seen all over. Uh, YouTube that uh, and some of the Facebook groups that we're in. Um, there was a time where everybody was making them and uh, um, I, I think they're beautiful, but you know, there was, there's not one video out there that I can find that has a drop stitch scarf with a straight edge, with a flat edge. And I um, thought, I, I can do that. And I mentioned later on in the video that, uh, that um, I lay awake at night and I come up with these ideas. And that's exactly what I did. Um, and I thought, okay, I wanna make a drop stitch scarf but I wanna make it with a flat edge, with a flat seam. And so that's what I'm gonna teach you in this video. I'm gonna teach you how to make this extra long drop stitch scarf. It's, it's very long, um, like it's, a, it's not the normal size of drop stitch scarf and you'll see that in my channel. You can wear it as long as I just showed you or you can wrap it around three times and have it a little bit thicker um, like that. That's beautiful. Or you can um, even wear it so it looks, with this shirt, it's got a collar, so it's not gonna work very well. But if you have a, a shirt that doesn't have a collar, make it like a turtleneck up here kind of thing. <laughs> I'm trying to look in the camera and make funny faces. And let that part drop. And that's a beautiful way to, there's just so many ways to wear it. And because it's, it's so long, choke myself here, because it's so long, you can actually just even put it in half, just like this, okay? And, and wear it just over like that. Um, you, can, you can put it in half around your neck and bring it to the front and, and then put this through the little loop and uh, have it like that. Because of the length of it, you got so many options. So I used, what did I use? I used Soft and Shiny from Loops and Threads, Soft and Shiny, and this is colorway of Snow Leopard, even the colorway color, the name is so, so nice, Snow Leopard. And so go out and get yourself a ball of this. You can make this with part of a ball. I'm gonna actually make myself a beanie to match. I use my Centro 40. Um, if you don't have that, you just have the 46 added, go ahead and use that. Um, it'll just be a bit wider, but go ahead and use it. <laughs> it'll work. All right, so, Get your supplies, join me in this video, and let's have some fun. Happy knitting, my friends. Okay, so once you have your Centro 40 needle machine um, ready to go, then let's grab our waist yarn. Now you want a contrasting color or one that you can easily see that's different from your working yarn. We're going to bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn guide. And if you're new to my channel, you'll know that I take a black permanent marker and I color that divider that's between the two so I always can see when it's coming around. It's just so helpful for, for when you're doing color changes especially, um, or when you're counting your rows, you just know when it's coming around. Um, so I find that very helpful. So I'm gonna go behind my first black needle and I'm gonna go in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. This is called the long tail cast on, okay? So behind and in front, all the way around. until we get to the end. And then if you've done it right, you should your waist yarn should go behind your last white needle. Okay, so let's see, there we go, behind my last white needle. I'm going to make sure it goes into my yarn feeder, but also into this little part that's at the front there. Okay, and then I'm going to put, this is my, this is four weight yarn, so I'm gonna put it in the middle tensioner on my central. And then I'm going to crank out um, seven or eight rows. I'm gonna go slow because sometimes these needles don't pick up the, the yarn uh, right away. So on the first couple of rows. So I'm gonna go slow, making sure that, that it's picking up all of the 
uh, every needle is picking up the yarn, taking it down. Then I can increase my speed a little bit once you get the first row done. Okay. And I'm going to do seven rows of waist yarn. Oh, let me tighten my... I use my Addy clamps for my central. Put them around the, the rubber um, suction cups that are on the central. And uh, it works very well, but I didn't have it tight enough, so I just tightened it. Okay, so I'm going to keep going until I get seven rows of waist yarn. Or however many you're comfortable with, bull with you might want to do more, you might want to do less. Um, I find that uh, this is a good number for me. Okay, so I know it's catching, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. lost count but I think that's I think that's six I'm gonna do one more okay so I can see that black marked divider coming around so I know I'm gonna stop it in front of my yarn feeder I'm gonna cut off my waist yarn I'm gonna take it out of the yarn guide put it between the last white the first black I'm gonna choose my working yarn this is a I think this um soft and shiny is a three weight yarn it's a four weight yarn it feels like a three weight yarn um, but it is a four weight yarn. I'm going to put that in my yarn feeder and I'm going to put it in the smallest tensioner. Then I'm going to hold both ends of my, my, um, waist of my yarn ends that are in the center there. And I'm going to crank now because this says it's a four weight yarn, but be and I, because, because it feels thinner, I want to make sure that it gets caught underneath these teeth. And sometimes with this thinner, softer yarn, um, it just doesn't want to do that. So I'm going to get the first few needles done there. See how it's over this divider here? I'm gonna take both ends of my working yarn. I'm gonna tug it a little bit so that it goes underneath those dividers. That way my tension is even on my first few stitches as well. And then I'm going to um, crank very slowly, making sure that this um, yarn catches, okay? Now the problem with these centrals is that they don't have counters. The bigger one does. My 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 counter on my bigger central worked maybe for the first two days and then it quit. <laughs> so I'm going to eventually get some of those, uh, uh, two of the counters that you can order off at Amazon, the purple ones, um, and use those and attach those to my machines. I just haven't done it yet. Okay, so I find with this thinner yarn, if you, like it's in my, sm my my tightest tensioner, but if I, if I, um, then put my, um, hold it with my between my two fingers and give it even a little bit more tension. I find that it helps. Now you want to make sure that those stitches are going over those two pink teeth, um, so that you prevent a tucked stitch. Which means I've got to go a little bit slower because with this particular yarn, I do get tucked stitches quite easily. So for the first few rows, I'm going to go a little bit slower. Okay. okay, and then if you find that you're getting tucked stitches, right now this is working for me, but this yarn previously on this machine I have had some trouble with. It's, it's just doing great right now. Maybe it's the even tension and the even speed that I'm going, um, but sometimes the, the stitch doesn't want to drop over those two pink teeth. So what you might have to do, if you're having that problem and you're finding you're tucking stitches, then until you get um, a certain amount of, of rows down so that there's some weight on here, just take your hand and lightly, lightly, you don't need to put much pressure, I'm hardly putting pressure on it. I'm going to just push down on my project in the middle of my machine like that because what that does is it puts the um, stitches over your teeth while this while these needles are grabbing it and taking it down. So most often I've had to do that, so that's why I'm showing you it. I, I, it's not giving me a problem um, this time around. Um, but if if it is, this is this is all you do. You just lightly hold it and push it down just slightly as it comes past this past the yarn um, feeder there, and then you'll have no problem until you get to about. With this thinner feeling yarn, usually I have to get to a, about row 40 or 50, somewhere in there. And then I can start rolling it up into a donut. And when I roll it up into a donut, what that does is it puts tension um, on the barrel here and uh, or around the edge here of the barrel. And then and then I can I can knit without 
too much trouble without tuck stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep knitting. Um, and when I get to somewhere between row 40 and row 50, I'll stop and I'll show you um, what I'm gonna do. Okay, so we're going to, in total, knit 150 rows um, on our drop stitch scarf. So you go ahead and you continue your project and I'll see you back when you get to between somewhere between row 40 and 45. Whenever you feel you're ready to start wrap, rolling it up into a donut, um, see me back and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so keep going, have fun, talk to you later. <laughs> All right, so I just finished row 45, and then I was able to roll it up into a donut um, because I've been pushing it down like this, as you saw, um, to try to make sure that these little um, uh, stitches go over the teeth. Um, but now that there's some weight to it, I, and some, if I roll it up, it puts tension around the brim here, and, and then uh, it makes a difference. So then I'm just able to, um, to, to, uh, to crank it without um, helping it. But I still go at a fairly um, slow speed. Oops, see, because this one didn't catch. This is really thin yarn. And sometimes it doesn't, uh, like it's three weight yarn, but I didn't go too far so I can just back it up and fix that. Just put that over the teeth, make sure that's under there. Um, so I still am going a little bit slow because I want to make sure that I see every stitch, this one too. This one's getting stuck too. So maybe I still do have to help it um, for a little bit longer until there's a little bit more weight on that donut. I think that's that's part of the problem because it's it's such a lightweight a lightweight um yarn. There's just not enough weight to pull the to pull the um stitches down over those teeth. And so that's why we're getting tucked stitches. But you know, still I don't have a problem doing it this way. I I, I don't think it takes too much longer. I know I can't crank and just give her but but I, I'd rather um have a, have a, a nice looking project. See this one dropped, this one tucked, actually it dropped and now it's un unraveling. So I missed that when I was going around to you. So that's good. I'm just gonna, gonna stay on camera here and show you how to fix that. I do have, <clears throat> I do have a video that does uh, show you how, but um, I'm going to, I'm gonna make sure that this stitch is done here. I have a video that shows you how to fix the touch, tuck stitch, but we're on camera here. So I'll just show you. You just take it off, okay? And you feed it down until you get to to your loop there that's that's finished and then you're going to take your crochet hook for this um i always use my 4.5 needle hook and then you're going to put it put the 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 um stitch over like the the bar over your hook and then you're going to insert it into that stitch that's finished then you're going to pull that stitch through that's one then grab that bar again and go through that's two so i'm going to grab the next one i always count to two and then i know so one and two. Take the next bar, one and two. Next bar, one and two. I'm gonna do that all the way up. So it's not hard to fix a tuck stitch. It just takes some patience and some time. Um, and, and you'll get her done. I, you know, it's funny because um, up until this point, I haven't tucked or dropped one stitch by by helping it along. And now <laughs> I come on camera and I'm having these issues, but that's okay because then it's a, it's a teaching moment for some of you who don't know how to do this. But again, I do have videos on this if you want to see it slower um, and see it done again and, and, and have a video that's just focused on that. Okay, so here we go. Almost up to the top. Oops, dropped that. Catch that stitch there. It's very, um, this this yarn, particular yarn is soft and shiny and it's very, very soft. And so it's, it's kind of hard to hold as well. <clears throat> so here we go. That's one. Making sure the closer you get to the top that, like I, I feed this, this working yarn, in between those teeth to hold that stitch on and then I wind it around my my um, tensioner there just because you don't want that stitch to fall off as you're tugging on this to get this last tighter stitch finished so now that's done I'm gonna put it underneath those little um, dividers put it over in its place and then I'm going to unwind this okay now I've got to put this underneath that bar that divider and under that stitch that I just fixed 
and then I can continue on, okay? All right, so you keep going until you get to row 150. Um, lots of, the, of these drop stitch scarves um, that, you, that you see on um, YouTube have 100 rows in them, but I'm gonna do this one 150 and we're gonna be able to wrap it around several more times. Um, and so let's just uh, keep going till you get to row 150, making sure that your stitches don't tuck and making sure that um, every once in a while you roll this up so that it keeps the tension a little bit tighter around your barrel here. The longer you go, the heavier this is gonna get and it's gonna help you with your stitches here. So I'm gonna just continue going slowly because I'd rather go slow, making sure my stitches are all correct than to have to stop and fix a few stitches like I just did, okay? So I, I, I'm putting tension on my, um, on my working yarn that's at the bottom here too with my left hand. It is in the smallest tensioner but I'm still um, putting extra tension on with my fingers. And I'm, I'm finding that works, that works the best. Okay, so keep going until you get to row 150 and then see me back. All right, I made it to row 150. And with the rolling up of this donut and the tension that I um, then put around the rim of the barrel here, um, I, I had no problem finishing um, the last number of rows because it didn't it didn't uh, tuck or drop or anything because there was some tightness in there so it worked really really well once I got going so that's that's excellent I'm happy about that so I cut off my working yarn I took it out of my yarn guide I put it between my last white my last black I'm gonna go ahead and grab my waist yarn insert it into my yarn um, guide there in between the last white and the first black. I'm gonna hold both of those little ends so I can get some tension on it. And then I'm going to give it one little tie so it stays, doesn't start unraveling on me. And then because I'm still working into these um, lighter stitches with a heavier yarn, because I'm using a four weight yarn for this, I'm going to go real slow to make sure that it picks up every stitch. It's very, very important that you don't tuck a stitch on this row of waist yarn because uh, you don't want to drop a stitch once you take this off your, off your machine, okay? So I'm watching as every needle passes by that yarn guide. I feel the tension, <laughs> but it's okay. It's because I put this in, in the tightest little tension. I'm gonna move it up to, the, up to the middle tension because it's a thicker yarn. I don't need it to be that tight, okay? And then just because I want to be sure, I'm going to, I'm going to go slowly. Now generally I do seven rows of waist yarn, seven or eight rows of waist yarn. Um, but at the end of the project is the side that if it's going to unravel, it's this side. Um, and so I have decided lately that I'm going to, at the end of my project, if I need waist yarn, I'm going to do more than seven rows. I'm actually going to do about 12 rows. Um, of waist yarn because in the last few projects that I've done, it started to unravel. So um, I just want to give it uh, more length so that if it's unraveling, I don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna keep going around here until I get 12 rows of waist yarn and then I'll see you back. I think I've done four, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so put your waist yarn on and then see me back. All right, I finished my 12 or 13 rows of waist yarn and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to take it out of my yarn guide, put it between my last white, my first black needle, and I'm going to turn my handle until my um, project releases. So on the second turn around, it starts to release. There we go. So now you can feel it just let go. Okay. And I help it off just like this. Okay. And be careful with this last stitch, like carefully undo it because that's where it starts to unravel from. I love those two. I love navy with this, <laughs> with this color of uh, working yarn too. So it looks great. I might have to think of something for that. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And once it's off your, your uh, machine, then let's uh, go ahead and do the next step. All right, well, I hope the shadows aren't too bad. It's, it's um, dark. I'm, my craft room is downstairs and there's no light coming through the window. So I've got um, a little lamp on in my ceiling lights and sometimes it's, it casts shadows and no matter what I do, I can't figure out how to fix that. So um, I hope that it's, that it's gonna be a good video here for you. But anyways, now that we have our, our project off the machine, we're going to stretch it widthwise, just very lightly. And 
lengthwise. I do that with everything I take off the machine. I find that it softens it up. It lines up your rows and it, um, it just makes a big difference in your project, okay? So I'm gonna do that. Now you're gonna find the end. You want the side that was the, the base. Now I've rotated this, so I have to figure out which one that is, but that's easy to do because the one that unravels really easily, see if I pull on that, it's gonna unravel. That's the back, that's the bottom. That's the side I want first. So find your two stitch markers. For me, I'm gonna use my bobby pins. Now, in order to find the, the first stitch, wherever your waist yarn is coming out of, that's this stitch, that's where I'm gonna put my first stitch marker. Okay, that's my number one. And then, if I take my working yarn, the, the loop that it's attached to, like if I was to pull on this loop, it pulls on my waist yarn, see that? That's my 40th stitch. So I'm gonna put a stitch marker in there I know there's 40 stitches in this because I used my center 40. So <clears throat> stitch 20 and 21 are exactly exactly center. So I'm gonna count around. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. This is 20 and that is 21. So I'm gonna put my hook in 21. I have a 4.5 4 millimeter um, crochet hook. Um, you can use whichever is you like better. Uh, best and I'm going to pick up the stitch with it would be number 20 and I'm going to take it through that loop that's on the hook so I'm going to count that as two because the first one was one this is two go down to the bottom pick up that stitch three the top pick up a stitch put it through the loop on my hook four go to the bottom five six seven oops and go to the top, eight. I count because I wanna make sure I have all 40. This is um, splitting. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Back and forth like this till you get to the end. All right, so I'm gonna go off the camera and I'm gonna finish this and I'll meet you when we get to the end of our row, all right? All right, so I'm at the end of the row and that's where these bobby pins help because sometimes these stitches get really tight and they're hard to find. So I've counted and I've done 38 stitches. I'm gonna pull up on that one, that's 39. And I'm gonna work it. Then I'm gonna pull up on that other bobby pin, making sure your tails are always outside of your your um, project because if you sew them on the inside to the inside, then you're gonna have to rip this out to find them. <laughs> so that's 40, I'm gonna finish that off. Then I'm gonna take my working yarn I'm gonna yarn over, pull it through that loop, and then pull it tight, and then I've got a good knot there. So then this one, I can remove the waist yarn. So I'm just gonna pull it off. So this this um, this end is easy, you just unravel it just like that. The other end's easy too, but it's just got one more step to do, okay? And I'll show you that. All right, so we're gonna take this off. Almost there. There we go, so we've got our beautiful finished edge. I just love this yarn. I just think it's so gorgeous and man, it feels nice. You need to run out and get yourself some. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to finish our next, our other end. And that one's a little bit trickier because we need to, we need to, we want to close it off the flat stitch, but we need to, to, um, drop every second stitch. Okay. So I goofed and <laughs> I had to, um, take my waist yarn off this first side and put my my project back on the machine and then add waste yarn again um if you need to know how to i didn't do that on camera because that would have taken way too much time and it's uh really not part of this video because i'm sure you didn't goof <laughs> so um in order to do that um i had to just uh put all these stitches back on onto the machine and then redo the waste yarn um if you need to know how to put a project back on the machine once it's been taken off i do have video for that so um, you can look that up and uh, and you know that might help you out okay so I'm gonna put my stitch marker in the first and in the last stitch the one that has two one on top of each other it looks like there's two stitches here two rows that you can clearly see um, you're gonna use the top one and then on this side um, that first one there. Now this looks a little bit different than what it normally would because um, essentially this this waste yarn is now like what it looks like when you when you take your project off because I I um 
I had to, again, put it back on the machine and do it. So that's why I'm not going to go into detail to show you where those stitches are because for you it'll be different. It'll look a little bit different. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to drop every second stitch. We are going to, we're going to um, count around to the 20th stitch because that's middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 right here. Okay, so... This is a working stitch, which means that's going to be a dropped stitch, okay? So, you might have to, you might have to put markers on every second stitch, just so it, it's um, not hard for you to, to tell. So, you know, you could use, bobby pins are easier to, to get on and off. So, let's just say, okay, this is my working stitch, that's the dropped working stitch, dropped working stitch or opposite however you whichever way you want to do it but every second stitch um you're you're going to to drop so i'm going to say well let's get these all on then we'll decide which way we're going to go okay let's put some on this side so if that's working and dropped working working dropped so this is be let's say that this is the dropped and this is the working this is the dropped so i'm going to take that out of there Nope, that has to be the working. So we're gonna the bobby pins are gonna be the working because that's where I'm gonna go. That's what the first stitch that I'm gonna start. So I have to have my hook under there. Okay, so I'm gonna only do a few of these. I'm not gonna do it all the way around, but just to 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 get the um, vision of it. So um, let's count again: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So I'm going to go under twenty-one because twenty and twenty one are my um, corner stitches okay so I'm going to take that stitch underneath like that and I'm going to go across I'm going to miss this one I'm going to go across and I'm going to grab that one work it through okay then I'm going to go across to where my next bobby pin is work it so I'm only closing off the stitches that aren't going to be dropped okay now you're gonna do this very loosely because you're skipping a stitch and and you want you're gonna you don't want it to be too tight, okay? So now I these ones are done. Okay, I'm gonna take them out because we've already worked them. Make sure that doesn't fall out. And then you can add them a little further down the row, okay? So um, every second stitch. So we've got that one. I'm gonna put it in here. and in here and later on once like this is going to be a little bit wider because those stitches are going to be dropped um, we can go in with a needle and a thread or a yarn and um, just seam it up a little bit so it looks a little bit neater we'll see how it how this one turns out we we probably won't have to but we're we're gonna just do one step at a time so okay so now I know I'm working the ones with the bobby pins right so I'm gonna go Uh, that one's worked already so I'm gonna go over to here I'm gonna work that then I'm gonna go over to here work that bobby pin trying to keep this as loose as I possibly can work it if you mark them see it's easy to find the, this you know then you won't make a mistake you know you're marking every second one normally you would say oh man if you miss a stitch you're gonna your whole row's gonna drop well that's good because that's what we want so um anyways let's take these out we're gonna move them down just because it helps us to to um to visualize it okay I'm gonna put it in every second one this is why I love bobby pins they're so quick so easy and uh cheap <laughs> you can go to the dollarama and buy yourself a whole big package of them for next to nothing and uh they're the best stitch markers you're going to want to use okay so now i'm coming out that side so i'm going to go over to this one and then over to this one and this one and this one and i can pull these out again as i go I'm going to want to use a couple more. I'm going to put one in here. I 
if this works out, there'll be one. Yeah, this one doesn't need one. Okay, that was just marking my stitch. Okay, so then I'm going to go over to this one. And this one. I'm getting near the end, so... Oopsie, dropped that one. It gets, it gets a little bit tighter, so I'm going to pull these bobby pins out just so they're not in my way. And I know I got to keep these two yarn ends out. I'm going to go over to this one. And I'm going to work it. And this last one, lift up my bobby pin so I can get under it. Pull that out. Oops, getting a little loose. Work that. Then I'm going to take this yarn end, loop it over so that that fastens off. Now we've got a, a flat edge, but you know what's gonna happen when we take all this waste yarn off? These stitches are all gonna drop, okay? Um, so before we do that, I think what we're going to do is we're going to get a, a needle, get your needle, and get a, a yarn, a piece of yarn about a foot long that's in your working yarn color, thread your needle and see me back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our flatten our, our piece so that it's uh, all lined up and, like it's all it's not twisted it's just flat we're going to have our two ends in the middle there I'm going to take um, I'm going to just thread this through the one side here just like that and then I'm going to tie a knot here with the two ends and then I'll hide these two ends afterwards but um, I'm going to just snip them off just a little bit those will get hidden, we'll, we'll hide those later, but it just gives me a working yarn here. So I'm going to start seaming this. Now, of course, this is not gonna be a tube because, like an open tube, but it will it will um, flatten your end here. But we're going to, you're not gonna pick up these stitches that are that we're, are going to drop, but you're just going to, to go in and pick up the part that is, is worked, okay? Then I'm gonna go across, I'm gonna pick up my work. I'm going to go across, pick up the stitch there. Oops, got that all tangled. I'm going to go in and then I'm going to go underneath that stitch that was worked, not the ones that are dropping, but the other one. And I'm going to do this all the way across. Okay, so that those two ends are together and then I'm going to pull out my waste yarn, okay? I'm gonna go over it a little closer there. So go ahead, seam that all the way down, just like what I'm doing here, and uh, then see me back when you're done. All right, so I'm at the end and I wanna make sure I get that very edge stitch in there, and then I'm going to go underneath this very last stitch. I'm gonna tie it off. Then I'm gonna take this end, oops, and I'm gonna just give it another double knot. Just like so. It's crazy how, like this looks so small, but once you start dropping your stitches, it just like gets so long, it's just so awesome. Okay, so we're going to, um, we're gonna hide these. I'm gonna just, stick them in here really quick. Generally, I'd go back and forth a little bit inside, but this video is getting too long already. So I'm going to just finish that off. And I'm going to take this one and go through there. Being careful that I don't connect with any um, stitches that are going to drop. Cut that off. Now I'm going to remove my waste yarn. Now for you, your waste yarn, you're going to have to, to um, take the top one out by rolling up and then pinching the stitch on the left and then pulling it out because you're working with the, with the um, first, with your cast on row. But because I had to put my project back on, um, I can't do that. So I'm going to just unravel this. I, I don't have to do that. So I'm just going to unravel this and... I find it sometimes, like I won't reuse this because I find it easier if I cut it off and then keep going. Um, so go ahead, unravel your waste yarn, and when you're done that, see me back. Okay, so you did that, and now you can already see your stitches are starting to drop. So pick a row, any row, 
and just start dropping. This is the most satisfying part of this whole project, right? But with this yarn, I'll, I'll just warn you, sometimes it, it snags. Um, so go, go a, you know, fairly slow. And you're going to just go down and you're going to, you're going to just unravel. I'll do a little bit at a time on each row. And you're going to just drop those stitches. <laughs> like, look at that. This is the most satisfying thing. Like, seriously, my friends. You're going to love me for this one. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to have a beautiful drop stitch scarf with a flat edge. You don't have to worry about putting a little buckle on there or tying a little, you know, yarn around it. Those are beautiful too, don't get me wrong, but this is just... A different idea. I, I think a lot at night when I should be sleeping like three or four in the morning <laughs> and I thought I can do a drop stitch scarf with a flat edge. Like I can do it. And um, so anyways we've done it together. So I am going to tell you that um, I want to see your projects so badly and you can't post them on YouTube. So um, I just yesterday put up a group Koala Knits and Knacks. It's a Facebook group. Um, now I hesitated for a long time. Oh, this is so satisfying. I hesitated for a long time because there's there's a couple groups up already that um, we're all a part of and I love those groups. And I'm gonna shout out to Jojo Juju right now because I love that girl. Um, she, she was very, it, she's an inspiration to all of us. Um, but I am going to, um, she actually told me a while ago that to grow my channel and to get more, you know, people to, she was encouraging me and she said that it would be a good idea to start a channel. So, um, I, I know that I have her blessing on that. I don't, I'm not a competition. She's, she's the queen. <laughs> she's the queen of, of circular knitting. But if you want to join my, my group, then we, you know, I, I can, I'll, I won't miss your, miss your pictures. If you're posting them in other groups, I might not see them. So I thought a long and hard about it because I didn't know if I wanted to do it. Um, but I do. I do because I want to see your projects. And so many times I've had comments in, on the comment section of my YouTube. Um, how can I show you what I made? And so this is how. So um, I just started it. So there's not many people on it. So when you when you look at it, you're going to say, oh, it's not a very popular group. That's because it's brand new. So please, please, please come and join. And um, and post your... I, I put a bunch of my videos on there just so that there's something on there. But I want you to post your projects... Um, on a separate post. So if you're making something that I've posted a video for, um, I, I just did that so that, that the group doesn't um, start with nothing on it. <laughs> um, but you just make your own post and post what you've made so we can all see your beautiful creations. There we go, got to the end and that's what it looks like at the end. It's a flat seam. Um, we'll play with this a little bit and get those stitches. See, I already loosened that one. Um, but it is joined and it's secure, so it's not going to come apart. Oh, shoot. I hope I was in the camera this whole time. I just looked up and I looked like I was off to the side. But you've got a beautiful flat edge to your drop stitch scarf. I just love it. It's so awesome. And I just love the fact that it's 150 rows of just beautifulness. So, anyways... Thank you for watching this tutorial. Thank you for taking part. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you learned something new and that uh, you make yourself some gorgeous drop stitch scarves. I'm going to wear this to church tomorrow. Can't wait, actually. It's going to be awesome. So thanks again, my friends. Take care. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. And uh, thanks for joining me. I sure appreciate you. Bye-bye.